pages, we've got numbers 1 through 4 from your periodic table displayed here. Let's look at number 1. We've got a periodic table shown um, here on the right, and they've got blue shaded for the non-metals. The only um, correction I would make to that is we want to add hydrogen here. Hydrogen right here is not a metal. You can see that right here in the black bold area, we've got our metalloids. And then the remaining unshaded elements, including our um, lanthanides and actinide series down here at the bottom, these are all considered non-metals. All right, number two, what's a compound? What's an example? And how can we represent it by an image? Well, we've got H2O right here, and we've got one atom of oxygen, two atoms of hydrogen. So you can see that the little subscript 2 represents the two atoms of hydrogen. And then no subscript next to the zero, or I'm sorry, the O, that's oxygen, means that there's only one atom of oxygen. Number three. What one element is in all organic compounds? Um, we call these um, the bio compounds, or I'm sorry, the bio elements. Carbon must be in a compound for it to be considered organic. And remember, carbon is the one element that's found in everything living or once was living. And that answers question number four. What element is found in everything biotic? Biotic means living carbon. Alright, here we've got questions 5 through 10 displayed for us. Number 5, what five other elements, the biochemical elements, bio meaning life, are important to life on Earth? Again, bio means life. Um, identify whether each metal, each is a metal, non-metal, or metalloid. And here we've got nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, very important for us humans produced by our green plants on Earth, sulfur, and phosphorus. And you can see that they are all non-metals, biochemical elements. Number six, what are the three main classifications of elements on the periodic table of elements? Well, it's pretty simple. We've got metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Number seven, what is a family or group on the periodic table? Give an example. Remember guys, our families or our groups go up and down or vertical. Elements in a column, vertical. For example, carbon, silicon, germanium, tin. Those are our family up and down columns on the periodic table. Number eight, how are elements related in a family or group? You know, in our families, we are we're related somehow. So we have common characteristics. Um, and here we can see in our answer, they react in similar ways because we have related physical and chemical properties, just like in our families with our parents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and so forth. Number nine. Number nine, how are elements arranged or organized on the periodic table of elements? Well, I like this because it's nice and simple. They're arranged by atomic number. That's the number that is at the top, usually, um, of the atomic symbol or the element symbol. Number ten, describe where metals, nonmetals, and metalloids can be found on the periodic table. This is pretty simple, too. Usually... We've got our metals, left side and middle section for the most part. Our non-metals for the most side are on the right, most part are on the right side, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen is a non-metal. And metalloids are along that zigzag line, except for aluminum. So you can see we've got very few exceptions from these answers in number 10. All right, and here we are back to uh, 11 through 14. Let's look at 11. This is about um, our popular planet Mars that we've done some exploration on from here on Earth. Number 11, Mars is red due to a red soil rich in iron oxide or common everyday rust. 
is this a physical or chemical change caused that caused this to occur? How do you know? Well, our answer reads, Mars is red from chemical oxidation of the iron-rich soil. It is chemical, chemically changing, because it's the result of a reaction and it's no longer iron. It's now a new substance or rust. Remember, oxidizing, we talked about in class, is the process of rusting. Number 12, give three examples of physical changes. We've got everyday water boiling, butter hardening from a liquid to a solid, paper foiling, um, I'm not sure what that is, but if you crumple up an, a piece of paper, that's just a physical change. We're not changing the properties of the substance, we're just changing maybe its size, shape, or appearance somehow. Number 13, give three indications of a chemical change taking place. Um, well, three indicators could be a temperature change going up or down. Number two, a new substance being formed, like in the case of iron turning into rust. Or three, bubbles form. We uh, did our film canister rockets and we saw bubbles forming. We've also got some eggs sitting in vinegar in our classrooms and we've got lots of bubbles forming there. So that's an indication that chemical changing is taking place. Number 14, what is the atomic number and atomic mass of nitrogen, capital N? How many protons, how many neutrons, and electrons are in nitrogen? Well, over here in our answer area, we've got atomic number 7, see right here. We've got atomic, uh, atomic mass, 14.01, and you can see it's close to 14.01 in the element square. Uh, protons, 7. The number of protons is the same as the atomic number. And the number of neutrons, if we subtract 7 from, or the atomic number from the atomic mass, we get the number of neutrons. And then electrons is usually the same as the atomic number, so it's going to be 7. And then we've got our drawing of the atom right here for nitrogen. Protons, seven. Neutrons, seven. And then our electrons are out in the cloud. All right, guys, let's look at number 15. Number 15 is very similar to the one that we just talked about with nitrogen, except this is being represented with sodium. Capital N, lowercase a. And we've got our atomic number, atomic mass, protons, neutrons, electrons, and a model of the atom right there. I'm going to let you take a pause and write that down. It is very similar. Actually, it's identical to what we just did with nitrogen. Number 16. What's a period on the periodic table, and how are elements in the periodic table related? Well, a period is a horizontal line. So that means from left to right. Think of the horizon. We look out in the sky, and it looks like it's a flat line as the sun rises or lowers. A period is a horizontal row on the periodic table. The atomic number increases by 1, or plus 1, each time you move from left to right. And the element on the left is very reactive, and the ones on the right are less reactive. So when you look at a periodic table, the ones on the left are very reactive. They easily react with other elements. The ones on the right, like our noble gases in group 18, they're less reactive. Okay, we're back here wrapping it up with 18 through 23. 18, what happens in a chemical change? In a chemical change, the chemical bonds break. The atoms rearrange to make something new. The new substance has new properties, chemical and physical. New properties. Let's look at 19. Describe the characteristics of group or family one. Remember our groups are vertical, up and down. Group one are the um, very shiny, reactive, malleable means that they can be bended and shaped. They're ductile means that they can um, 
be stretched out into tubes, maybe for manufacturing or production. They're hard and magnetic, shiny. Remember, metals. Metals, group one. 20, describe the characteristics of the noble gases, group 18. Again, our groups are up and down, vertical. They will not react with anything, and those elements are all gases. We call them noble because they are stable and they will not react with anything. 21. What's the formula for density? Well, we practiced on this quite a bit in class and you probably learned a little bit of it in sixth grade. And we've got a handy uh, triangle here. Density equals mass divided by volume. And if we're given other factors, like the density and the mass, we can divide mass by density and get the volume. And the same holds true for volume. If we're given, say, volume and density, we can multiply those together and get the mass. All right, 22, we're going to put our calculation hats on here. If a substance has a density of 10 and a volume of 5, what's the mass? Well, we need to draw, or I do because I'm not math savvy, draw, actually, let's look at our triangle from number 21. So we've got, we want to find the mass. So we've got the density and the volume. So we multiply the density times the volume and that gives us 50, and that is our mass. So that would be our answer for number 22. 23, if a substance has a mass of 50 and a volume of 5, I wonder if this is a typo here. A substance has a mass of 50 and a volume of 5, what's the mass? Well, they've already given that to us. I think what they meant to say here is instead of mass, if a substance has a density of 50 grams per cubic centimeter and a volume of 5. What's the mass? Well, again, if we're given the density and the volume, we multiply those two together to get the mass. So here, again, 50 times 5 equals 250. And yes, boys and girls, I did use my calculator for that because like I said, I am not math savvy.